Would you like to support Cubs Out Loud? One way is to join us over on Patreon. For as little as a buck a month, patrons get early access to our shows, the pre and post show, and various other rewards. You can learn more at patreon.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Thanks to all of our patrons for their support in making this podcast. It's Sunday, January 28th, 2024. I'm Jeff. Who's your bear? That's right. I am your bear. I'm Damon. I don't brew the tea. I just serve it. And that makes me Gary. Everyone else is thinking it, and I just say it. Welcome to Comes Out Loud, the Bear Podcast of Indeterminate Length, episode number 727. And I feel... This is going to be a really cheesy episode. Okay, dad jokes. Da dun dun, but I'm bum. I don't know. So let's talk about food. I do have to de- make one comment though. Is Uh-oh. Gary seems to be the one who's like not going with the theme today. What do you mean not going with the theme today? I think he's talking about your background, hon. Oh, I was like, I'm wearing <laughs> the right shirt. <laughs> it's the cookie shirt. And yeah, it's, you a, it's wear it's, the cookie shirt on the food you. episodes. It's virtually behind you, though. That's because I'm not personally, and I'm not, I'm not kink shaming. I personally am not a divorce. Oh my god. So because I have furry friends out there who are into that, I do not want to entice them by putting myself in front of food, making them think that they can eat me and put me in their tummy. So Okay, why did you so have you're to go saying there? You don't like the- <laughs> because be, no, because it's true. Like I saw both y'all like pop up with your little like mac and cheese backgrounds, and I was like, "Oh, that's cute." I just went with a classic brown wood boarded background, like where a dish would be served because I am what a dish. Thank you very much. But <laughs> y'all didn't know what you started. See, anyways, we're talking mac and cheese. Today, <laughs> according to Wikipedia, mac and cheese or macaroni and cheese, also called mac and cheese in Canada and the U.S. and macaroni and cheese, no and, in the United Kingdom, is a dish of macaroni and cheese sauce, most commonly cheddar sauce. Its origins trace back to cheese and pasta casserole dating to the 14th century in Italy and medieval England. The traditional macaroni and cheese is a casserole. Baked in the oven. However, it may be prepared in a saucepan on top of the stove or using a packaged mix. Cheese is often first incorporated into a bachamel sauce to create a Mornay sauce, which is then added to the pasta. In the United States, it is considered a comfort food. So you can see behind me, this is a picture I I took myself. Oh. Ah. Of oh, one of my mac Chef-y. and cheese casseroles. Chefy. Mm. Not mac and cheese, the casserole. It's a casserole <laughs> that uses macaroni, mac and cheese. Right. To be fair, slight difference. Right. Yes. Which I think we'll get into a little bit of that. Yes. Um, so yeah, it's the winter season. Uh, today is exactly the kind of day I would think of like having some mac and cheese because, um, our pride board went out in this lovely changing weather. 
um, because we picked a new location for Pride this year. Ah. So we did an on-site surveillance, walked around in actually freezing sleet and wind. Because we, we had to have access to be able to get to the place, so it was a predetermined thing. Wasn't yesterday when it was nicer. Wasn't a week ago when it was beautiful. Or earlier, anyways. So yeah, um, everybody got nearly soaking wet uh, standing outside in the sleep mm -hmm. and slush and snow and stuff. So uh, today's the kind of day that a homey comfort dish would um, hit the right spot. Um, but there are different kinds of mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to discuss a little bit about that and what our preferences are. Um, I see that uh, somebody has added a great number of videos, links, um, I guess to teach people about mac and cheese. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff walked away. <laughs> okay. Nice. Um, so, yeah, um, I guess I'll start with this before we get into discussing the, the three kind of topic areas in terms of uh, mm -hmm. our thoughts. Do you have a like nostalgia or fondness slash first memory about mac and cheese the old stovetop crack mac and cheese it was called a staple in the household although interesting now i go generic <laughs> so what's ironic is we bought the generic so back in my day, if you're using your bingo cards, you can get a freebie for that one. Um, there was a store. The store chain doesn't exist anymore, but the whole front section when you first came in with the grocery cart, I remember distinctly, was all the generic stuff. So oh. everything was white label or white box with black writing. Wow. And that's it. There were no pictures on anything. Well, no, like wow. in generic, they, they do they do more. Right. Yeah. This but, is this is this is like this generic, is this generic. is the HDB so this is the local. <laughs> right. But the thing is, like you walked in and you literally saw white labeled cans, white boxes. <sighs> And they just had black lettering on them. And they only said, well, I mean, I think there was probably an ingredient listing, but like it only said like the name of the thing. So it was like rice, green beans, <laughs> like, powdered milk. Like, wow. Yeah. And so I remember distinctly macaroni and cheese in a white box with plain black lettering on the outside. Now, the kicker was, which is kind of what we most of us in the US here know that um, Aldi or ID. Um, as they think I say they say it over in Europe uh, is the whole like it's most likely name brand. It's just not in the usual packaging mm. type stuff. So Which a it's, lot of generic stuff is right. Yeah. So, yeah, like it was a, it was a whole cost thing. But so, yes, I agree with you on the stove top in the pan, like astro orange glow <laughs> colored mac and cheese <laughs> yeah um so I, i'm 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 very different i will i was wondering david that. yeah 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 i am i am very different don't get me wrong i remember like the the craft boxes i remember those but um the one that immediately pops to my mind, um, it wasn't the re regular, like the regular, like square or rectangle, like tall box. There was a um, shorter, stouter, like rectangle box. It was the craft, like deluxe. Mm, okay. No. The, what the, kind of that this size? Shape, yes. This shape, though. Yeah, right? that yeah, yeah. shape kind of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the craft deluxe box was unique. Um, because it didn't come with the powdered cheese, came it came with a with pack, a packet. with a pack of cheese, kind of like the Velveeta one. So it so yeah. I'll put it like that. It probably was kind of like the Velveeta one, but it wasn't a Velveeta one. It was a craft one, right? And it was called like Deluxe or Signature. Yes. I remember that Deluxe, and they still make it. Yeah, it's still and and that one in particular, 
that was my mom would usually get those as the starter mm. for her mac and cheese. So, so she made mac and cheese like uh, sourdough bread. She, she got a <laughs> <laughs> something like that. The the we're, we'll get into it later because there was a start start talking about like box versus like right, you know right. you know what have you, but. <laughs> Those were, the, the, I distinctly remember when we were having like a bigger meal or the holidays or what have you, my mom would be getting those because that's what she used to make the everything that she ended up making. So, right. I, I'm not surprised to hear that it was the box stuff for us because we're, we're, you know, bear cubs of a certain generation. Mm-hmm. So, like, you know, the whole latchkey kid growing up in the like 70s to 80s uh-huh. and older and, like that was that was kind of it well and, 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 and micros didn't come on the scene until the 80s really into homes yeah and i didn't okay yeah i don't recall making it myself but i do know my brothers made it mm. not for us don't get me wrong like not for for me and my sister, like they made it for themselves. Like they were greedy bitches. Um, they would make the mac and cheese uh, for themselves. I, however, um, I, I don't think I ever. God, am I that much of a purist? Have I never made actual craft mac and cheese before? So my question is nowadays is because like. I swear it was like at least eight, seven, eight uh, was a time when I would be able to make mac and cheese on my own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Use a stove, a pot of water to boil, right. pour it in, and use the stove. My question is nowadays, how many parents like kids use <laughs> On their own, unsupervised. I don't know because, like, four year olds can figure out how to use a, a microwave. So, yeah, it's not. I, I, it's, ooh, that's a good question. Jeff. I'm, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't think it, but I could, we could be totally wrong. I know that there are kids chefs. I know that there are kid, you know, kids out there that are, that are making things like there's, if you watch Food Network every other like week, there's probably some kids baking challenge or big kids cooking challenge or something like that on there. So you know, nowadays they're allowing kids to do things now. Well, usually that begins with the kids with the parents, right? Right. Doing right. stuff with the parents. Yeah. And because of how good they are at yeah. doing everything and how how much into mm-hmm. cooking that so, they are. Yeah, that's where where they get to these points where they can go on to these type of shows, and actually, most of them are older than ten. Some of them are younger. I've watched a lot of the shows, and some of them are actually like younger than ten. But it's rare. Like it's like a like I'm I'm thinking again like mm-hmm. eight nine. I'm not thinking like babies like four right. five. Like no 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 no. They they are at least in school. If nothing, if not been you know a few years in school. So it's it's. But again, it, it I, I agree with you. I think it does take a, they show interest and the parents kind of guide them for a little bit before they're like, here you go. Like make your, make your own dinner, like <laughs> kind of thing. Like, whereas for us, it was like, um, mom and dad are both working. So um, you are on your own. I mean, we'll probably teach you the basics and some stuff, but you might have to learn how to do that shit on your own. Good luck. Have fun. That thing. But, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, So with that said, we'll get into our first kind of comparative. I had written down from scratch versus prepared versus boxed. And for me, from scratch, or you make Uh, the sauce from scratch. Presumably, most of us would have dried papasta, right? Paired. 
Prepared is, is it just needs to be heated. Ah. We can't see what you're... I think, I think the... I think the camera to you guys is worse than the camera to, to the audience ah. because it's, it's coming through just fine. Fine. So this is prepared. So I got this from the freezer section. It's mm. chicken bacon ranch. These in just popped in the microwave. Then box. Got it. Yeah. So when I grew up, like I thought the only way to make mac and cheese was from a box because I didn't know mm. that it box. could be prepared, ready to go until I got a little older. Um, and then, like, I was shocked the first time I went to a function that somebody had made it from scratch, like, and had it in a casserole dish mm. where it had been baked and, you know... Uh, that to me was a revelation. See what, what I, so my experience has primarily been, been the, the prepared and boxed. In fact, due to some research this week, I tried out a few boxes. And as you saw, I also had had one of the prepared ones. I don't think I've ever actually had a, from scratch. Mm. So they actually went, made a bachamel sauce, added the cheese to make the marmalade, cooked yeah. the elbow macaroni, mm -hmm. popped in the yeah. oven. So, and, and if you mean like mac and cheese that you would get like at a restaurant, it's probably more like paired. <laughs> Right, it depends on the type of restaurant. Right. Like, I'll, I'll say this now. Um, I mean, you could probably say, like, KFC has prepared mac and cheese, but it's probably more boxed because they probably have it or have made it somewhere in a factory somewhere and then, right. you know, sent it out. Whereas, like, say you go to... Um, a fancier restaurant or something like like here in in cincinnati we have or at least i believe um there's a chain called keystone um and they are known for their mac and cheeses um i'm going to assume that they prepare those although i think think it's kind of a chain so there might be some boxes going on right um I will Weird. say I <laughs> attempt to make a, a Mornay this weekend. Or weekend. Your your time off. Your weekend. <laughs> as opposed to the weekend. Right. Right. <laughs> um for me it's weird. It's kind of the opposite. Um as I told you all, like while I saw the boxes, I mine are kind of prepared ish. It's not from scratch. Right. Um, I will like I know it's not from scratch like I've known that for years <laughs> I prefer mine well I don't I don't think my mom ever was ever, ever going to like make a like bechamel bournet sauce from scratch and do all that shit no she didn't have time for that well and to be fair <laughs> like I mean my dad's side of the family more so than my mother's side of the family were cooks they wouldn't have called it bechamel or mornay they would have just said I made a cheese sauce yeah <laughs> like, yeah I just Fair. I just made this I made the sauce yeah. like they wouldn't get all but fancy with the name. I do know my mom wasn't making a cheese sauce. I mean, clearly, I've told you. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 I mean, that was some of it. Don't get me wrong; she did other things. But anyway, um, Wait, do you know your mom's recipe? Do I know my mom's recipe? No. Um, well, you best you get on how it. She cooked it. I will. I know how she. I have ideas of how she made it. Um, oh, but I do right. know you're it did not, not have. A, you're not a cookie person, I, so you. Were I'm not a cookie attention. person, so I was paying attention. Actually, I've I've watched her make it um, a few, several times actually, and then um, there was a when I first started coming home um, uh, for the holidays and was staying with her. I would um, usually I would see her, you know, taking time and making it. She did a lot of. Oh. 
um, preparing. So what did she do sorry. with the, the sauce? Did she just use the sauce as the cheese, or did she do something with the sauce to give it some more so, oomph, some juice? So she, I guess, I guess you would say she made a cheese sauce. So, but the base of it was the um, the stuff that I came think. out of the box. Right. Um, and, but she would add her own cheeses. Like she would usually do sharp. Um, she would cube sharp cheddar and I want to say mild cheddar. And she like did those two. And she sort of made a sauce. She was using um, emulsifiers in the chemical yeah. mm-hmm. emulsifiers. Yeah. In the to kind of make it meltier. Um, and then that gets. Um, mixed with the like, kind of like a like a mac and cheese. It gets mixed with the macaroni. She prepares the macaroni, boils, you know, boils right. the water, puts the macaroni in, does that. Um, and and who memories uh, going backwards. Um, the thing that always got me, which which was my favorite thing ever, and it's why I have this picture sort of behind me. Um, the cheese didn't stop with the bechamel sauce. Literally on top is a a layer of shredded sharp and and I think I think just sharp um, cheddar cheese. That's mm-hmm. a, that's a lot of macaroni and cheese casserole recipes. You make the macaroni with the cheese so- sauce, put it into a casserole dish, and then top it with a layer of cheese. They kind of melt and create a crust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It is. It's home early. Sorry. Random aside. Don't mind me. Um, <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, it 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 is. That's my favorite. That is always. That's going to always be number one for me. Um, and because of how wonderful it tastes to me, um, it's going to be hard to compare. That's it why I said you need to, to get beat. on getting the recipe. Yeah. So you and talk I know... to, your, to your hubby and you ask him, so <laughs> could you reach out to mama and ask her for her mac and cheese As recipe? a matter of fact, um, she has given the recipe <laughs> to my cousin who made oh, there you go. this most recent year. She made the mac and cheese this year. My mom did not make the mac and cheese for this Thanksgiving dinner. Oh. Um, and ten, I think... None of the like elders made stuff. Right. This 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 um, most recent Thanksgiving, I think it was a we're going to give them a break, so everyone else kind of ch- well, not me. Sorry, I'm I didn't because uh. <laughs> princess doesn't lift no utensils. Well, no, it's not that. It's that I'm the <laughs> one that travels further away. And doesn't really stay with in a place where there's like a stove. I usually stay in a hotel, so I don't have a way to make anything. Um, and I'm traveling. I was usually, I'm usually traveling by Greyhound, and I'm not taking shit on a Greyhound bus that's going to be consumed by other people later on. No offense. Well, oh come sure. on! You should have brought a crock pot on the Greyhound with so the smell could just permeate the entire bus and drive everybody nuts. Because, you know, that's a trope. Anyways. No. <laughs> you know, there's some crock pot recipes where it's basically take a bunch of stuff, throw it in the pot, and let it cook for eight hours, right? Yes, yes. I'm aware. Maybe I'm some aware. slight pre- preparation browning the meat before you yeah. pop the can of <laughs> tomatoes in. I'm just going to say it now. We need to own it. Americans are the laziest cooks in the world. But anyway. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, 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 yeah, I would say I've never done the full-on from scratch and i think didn't think i've ever no i have to assume that i've had it at some point i, I know mean, someone had a version but your your yeah. mama's yeah. recipe is definitely a version of from scratch when we say scratch. from scratch we're not saying you're making the noodles from scratch oh no 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 i know right, i'm just right. thinking along the lines of yeah it's but just yeah. you're anyway, not taking right. a box following the recipe now there yeah. are some cases where you take a box follow the recipe and then do something else with it yeah, right. And we'll we'll get to some of that here in a moment. So the thing I was relating or kind of hinting at earlier about the debate 
is Mm -hmm. I didn't know until I was in my last like long term career job that there are different kinds of mac and cheese. Mm. And I'm not talking about different noodles. Right. I'm talking about the consistency that it's made in. Right. And I had a coworker who was so proud of their mac and cheese. And when we had potlucks, they were going to bring their mac and cheese. And it's a family recipe. And it's so good. And I... It's edible. (laughs) Explica por favor. Girl, girl, we haven't seen each other in years. I'm just thinking, like, if they were to hear this podcast. And I'm like, first of all, hi, we haven't talked in a long time. I don't know what's going on in your life. And I don't know why you listen to this podcast. But um, <laughs> that being said, so here's here's the thing I never knew existed. Um, some people like their mac and cheese dry. Um, I still not quite considering understanding the the dry mac and cheese. So there's no cheese pull and there's no sauce. No. <laughs> so the macaroni's cooked. There was a sauce, but there's not much sauce and the sauce kind of gets absorbed by the macaroni. So it's kind of like, um, you can cut the mac and cheese with a knife. Like, like, and make squares. <laughs> so, so kind of like a, a mac and cheese version of a quiche. Probably put in a, bun- a little bit more egg. No, there's no egg. Do it for binder. No, it's just mostly so, cooked macaroni with a little bit of sauce. A lot of like ch- actual cheese. The cheese is the is the physical binder. It's just missing the sauce I, portion. When it's done cooking, it's literally like, it's like a, I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah, I can. Okay, let me rephrase. Uh, let me think. Um, I don't think it's. So I call it dry. So because uh, maybe, maybe it's a little bit more at least consistency work with me here consistency wise it's more along the lines of like rice crispy treats not that dry but yes but like, like the, the idea but you, that but you can cut it of... and you put yes. it out and you've got this like perfectly shaped correct it does not lose its shape it retains it it does not it does not ooze it does not fall apart it does not <laughs> I, I will say this. I believe I've had some had some like that. And in some sense, the mac and cheese casserole that I make is kind of like that. Although mine usually ends up falling a little bit more apart. Yeah. But mm. and, and is a little more wet. Yeah. That that was that was the thing that, that got me the most. I was not ready for that because I was like thinking it was gonna be there was gonna be sauce and there was gonna, it was gonna be what I call ooey gooey like mm-hmm, mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. and I'm not saying that every mac and cheese out there has to be like the Stouffer's oven ready like yeah. in the aluminum foil pan thing if you know like if you've ever had that like for a big function or just a family thing yeah um, it doesn't have to be like that. That said, though, <laughs> I was like, I was like, wow, OK, that's I... that's a lot of noodles <laughs> and some butter and some cheese and no real sauce. Um, <laughs> and I was just like, OK, just I didn't know that was coat. a thing. I don't mm, I don't I don't. <laughs> I really genuinely don't know what to say to this one. I'm kind of <laughs> mad. <laughs> but I, I'm not. No, not I don't. My preference. Yeah. It's, I'm trying it's to think a, if it's. I think it might be something where they just don't like 
necessarily like the consistency of like a fully gooey mac and cheese. Yeah. That. Mm. It's a texture. I just wasn't Me? ready for that. I didn't know that that I, was I've, a thing. Yeah. Like, to seen... me, I was like, like if I had to describe it, I would say it's a noodle bake mm-hmm. with cheese. There you go. That's that's, that, very fair. That, that's like, a very like, fair statement. Because I was like, first of all, it's acting a lot like a casserole, but most <laughs> casseroles, like... <laughs> Like they have some viscosity, like they kind yeah. of lose yeah. their shape. Like you scoop it or whatever, you portion yeah. it out, you put it on the plate. Like even lasagna, some of them, you know, could be pretty saucy. And so, like, you know, it's a yeah. thing. And it just like, <laughs> so it was, I was, I was not ready for that. I was like, oh, okay. Lasagna, <laughs> another dish that uses bachamel. Yeah. Although, <laughs> first of all, although most you, of the but... time people use ricotta instead of a bachamel. But yeah, yeah. Right. I I'm I kind of am. No, I'm. Mm, yeah, noodle bake. That that's what that was. That's a cheesy noodle <laughs> bake. That was a cheesy noodle bake. Um, that part. Yeah, yeah, that's what that was. That was. So, I just wanted to put that out there as like I was. It was so funny to me when I found out because I was like, oh, that's a thing. I didn't. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, like, I, do, I, do, I, I think I've seen some of that and actually some of the places where we've had like a restaurant prepared or something was very much like that. God. Well, it might have fall, fallen apart a little and, bit better. Yeah. And to me, on the opposite end of that, I do not like a runny mac and cheese. So you don't want it soupy? No. Is that, okay. In other words, the so sauce like, has to be thick and cling to the. Yes, the I want to. I, <laughs> I really want really thick sauce. I want it to be really, really thick. At least two or three C's. Like. <laughs> okay <laughs> then. To be thick. Um, because. They don't like the to worst. It. Good lord, no, sir. Anyway, the 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 um. The the worst. So I'll put it like this. Um, uh, we I was talking about KFC earlier. Um, when KFC, I think I don't know when they added mac and cheese, but it's been a while. Um, but KFC mac and cheese is garbage. Um, <laughs> like point blank period, it is garbage. Um, I. Uh... I don't when I'll put it like this. If I can get my like fork in, you no, know, if I can dip a spoon in and pour out and pull out nothing but like like sauce or whatever, mm-hmm. it's a no. That's a no for me. Okay. Um I need there to be some viscosity, some thickness to the 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 sauce. Right, right. Um, I don't want to say completely dry. Don't want to go that far, but I do. No, want you, know, you want a balance of the of the noodles to the sauce. Yeah, like this. The the picture you showed us. That's. Um, that's so yeah, the picture that I said to the guys in, in the in the chat just the now top. That is awful from Martha Stewart's website, and it's John Legend's apparently mac and cheese. Now, here's the here's the caveat though. This has more sauce than what I was describing that had been served. Like, and the reason why I sent them this picture was because it is a perfect square of a baked mac and cheese, like out of a pan of some kind or whatever. But even yeah. here I can see there's a little bit you know more sauce and stuff than that. So, anyways, I just didn't know <laughs> that that could be a thing. Um, when it comes to making yeah. Mac and cheese that is, scratch that with is, recipe. That's something I don't. I... So as a as a caveat to those of you out there that have not made mac and cheese from scratch, I will say this: my recommendation would be to actually look up a couple of recipes online, get a uh-huh. feeling for something. Oh, wait. and and not just put. I have a couple of videos. Cooked. I... <laughs> that's fair, Jeff. That's very fair. <laughs> there will be some links you can watch them. But what I was going to say is, I would not just take cooked pasta 
and then throw a bunch of shredded cheese in there because that's mm. not quite the same thing. Again, no. from the definition, you make a Mornay sauce. You start by, or, by making a roux. But you could use a prepared cheese sauce. Yeah. I mean, if you really, if you, listen, if, if you're the can a po, cheese. If, right, if you're a Poe college student, you buy a jar of cheese whiz on clearance. <laughs> Watch your blood pressure go up with all that sodium. <laughs> if you want to get a little spicier, just get some of the, the, uh, 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 queso? queso, yeah, like just great, get a jar or two of the the uh, toast, the uh, to tostitos. Yeah, there's options. I mean, the reality is you could buy ready to go mac and cheese pretty much anywhere yeah. anymore. Um, <laughs> <And, laughs> so that being said, and when in doubt, you got the, I mean, so. <laughs> Let's move on to our second um, portion, flavor enhanced, uh, which I listed as add-ins, toppings, et cetera. So in other words, it's not just mac and cheese. Now we're, and I can't believe I'm about to say this word, elevating, so to speak. So we're, we're adding things. Gonna as level a classic, up? well, as a kid, it was a classic to chop up hot dogs. Oh, yeah. And put, it in, and put it in the mac and cheese. Um, and I think that's a good way to start. Like I am good with a a meat added to a mac and cheese. A yeah. oh hey, this is this is um um favorite I will say bacon mac and cheese. Like a like mm -hmm. just give us give me the heart attack. Put those two wonderful flavors together. <laughs> um, that I I I can enjoy. Oh yes, yeah. Not Hot me sauce. personally, but I'm I, I'm not specifically saying. Although this is my preferred, my mm -hmm. preferred is is like some Cholula Chipotle. Okay. Hot sauce, but I mean any hot sauce will do that you prefer. I mean, if Beyonce taught anybody anything, you take your hot sauce with you. Yes. So, I I I think that's a. A thing. No, no, no. I think that's fair. Um, I agree with you, Damon, about a meat mm -hmm. um, type thing. I think bacon is just kind of an automatic go to. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. um, be it bacon bits, bacon pieces, crumbled bacon, crumbled bacon, whatever. Chicken. I can see chicken. I'm not too awful with chicken. I'm yeah. not too bad with chicken. I would not say like ground beef or sausage unless you're making like mac and cheese casserole. Yeah, like. You want something that's not going to, I don't want to say compete, but has a tougher consistency. Well, um, but this is where it's funny to me because I remember being a kid when Hamburger Helper came on the scene. Uh, and it was like, you just take ground beef, yeah. cook it in a pan, yeah. and then you like add the other stuff. And one of the classic flavors was beef and cheese, like like mac and cheese. Like for burger, me, not before you know. me, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. so, I mean, to me, you could still call that a mac and cheese, kind of, yeah, kind of like. I think at that point it's about ratio. It's like, well, how much, mm -hmm. <laughs> how much of what to the other? Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, and this is just we'll see how this goes. Um. Given that mac and cheese is meant to be a comfort food, I am not a fan of adding vegetables to macaroni and cheese. That's okay. Yeah, I don't. I don't think like not not adding... when it's just mac and cheese. Yes, agreed. Like if it's supposed to be like a mac and cheese kind of thing, then no veggies. Like this is, is meant to be comfort. Is part of the ingredients <laughs> of it overall a bigger dish yeah then i can 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 add to it like uh i made my mac and cheese casserole with not just beef but italian sausage uh i've mm -hmm. uh, actually thrown in like a jar of um rotel mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tomatoes and chilies 
Yeah. I think to me, once you start adding certain vegetables, it's, it's no longer mac and cheese. It's not uh, something else. Peas. I grew up What's with that, Jeff? Pe- peas. Yeah. So I was waiting. That's why I was laughing when, when David was like, no, you don't add vegetables. And I was like, well, <laughs> good thing I live by myself because <laughs> I have gotten into a thing in the past few years that I take fresh frozen peas. Mm-hmm. And I put them in when the macaroni is cooking so that the hot water basically brings the peas up to temp by the time I drain the mac. And then, yeah. Broccoli? So it's a it's a good way to get a little vegetable in your diet. Broccoli? <laughs> See, this is where we're going to disagree. <laughs> <laughs> I would Jeff I, on I, this. Like, I don't have a problem with respect, putting a little. Like, do, a little do you like broccoli cheese soup? Yes, that's fine. If I want mac and cheese, it's I want the fucking same mac thing. and cheese. It's just with yeah. macaroni. <laughs> yeah. I just, I just like you can have. I could. I don't get me wrong. I will have veggies, veggies, vegetables. What those things? I can have a wonderful, lovely med, on med, vegetable I medley the on, the side, the on the side. On the side, over here. Side. It's not in the mac and cheese. Quick, quick, quick side note. <laughs> Hember helpers mac and cheese with uh-huh. is actually called cheeseburger macaroni. There we so go. No, it's not considered mac and cheese. It's yeah. cheeseburger macaroni. That's right. And to be fair, mm. I I think some of the cheeseburger macaroni actually has some additional ingredients to make it more cheeseburger esque, like yeah. um, more of uh with like some like pickle juice or something to get it like it's also mm, a cheaper. Okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it. It might have yeah, some there's... some tomatoes into the to the, the powder to, to for ketchup and maybe a little mustard in there. Yeah, I was gonna say there's probably like onion powder, tomato powder, probably um some vinegar powder for that tartness, and then <laughs> um probably some beef flavoring. Yeah. Um, just to kind of give it a little oomph or whatever. No, I, has, I, that's totally fair. Speaking of which, it has enriched macaroni. I'm not going to go into the specifics on that. Mm-hmm. Um, cornstarch, salt, modified whey, sugar. Contains 2% or less of tomato, dried tomato, onion, vegetable oil, citric acid, whey, multidextrin, Garlic, spice, cheddar cheese, uh, you know, glycerides, yeast ex- extract, non fat milk, arabic, natural flavor, sodium phosphate, blue cheese, and silicon blue dioxide cheese as an anti kid. Interesting, huh? It just, it just surprises me. Um, Although I'm not seeing seeing where they would have gotten the tomato the the pickle flavoring because I swear I've had some of the cheeseburger macaroni and had that there was some, flavor. some cheeseburger esque uh, pickleish flavor. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think there's lots of different varieties yeah. out there. And but... oh, that might be some part of the citric acid or something. There you go. Probably. Yeah, that's, that's, that's probably the... it. Um, the, um, and again, enhancing, like I I go back to that restaurant Keystone and one of the things that I've often enjoyed about theirs is they do make these different types of things where is the base is mac and cheese and then they add things like there's a, a barbecue beef or barbecue Mm -hmm. brisket one, or there's a, there's a, um, one of the ones that came to mind. It's not Keystone specifically, but like a lobster mac and cheese. Like that's mm-hmm. something that I have I have had before, and I genuinely love because I think it's just a really good flavor. I only cringe um, on lobster mac and cheese because I don't like seafood. That's yeah, really the that's only fine. reason. Right. Yeah, I think it's a perfectly accept- acceptable dish. Yeah, yeah. My, not my jam. That's it. Not your jam. Um, I would say. Like Jeff mentioned, be careful with certain meats that you're putting in there because I think sometimes it can take away from the the um, texture consistency of a mac and cheese. Um, 
And sometimes it just may not always go with the mac and cheese, like some meats, um, some flavors, but that's just me. Right. Um, I'm, I'm thinking more along the lines of when I'm making just regular stove hot mac, mac and cheese. Yeah. So it's not like if I'm trying to make like, like if here's my plan for, for, for the research on this topic is when I attempt to make my Mornay sauce, what I am actually going to use that for is I'm going to try to just like make a small amount because I, I need to make sure I can do the roux. Mm. That's going to be, that's going to be the first thing. Once yes. I figured out the roux and everything and I can make that Mornay sauce, what am I going to do with that sauce? I have two applications. One of them is With this thick and creamy mac and cheese, I'm going to add in a pound of ground beef, mm. a can of cream of mushroom soup with roasted garlic, mm-hmm. the cheese sauce that I make, uh, mm-hmm. some, some dried uh, onion flakes, or minced onion, I think it's labeled as, mainly because it's just a nice little thing there. Probably throw in some some chives. Because I'm doing the cheese sauce, I won't be any adding extra cheese like I normally do because the cheese sauce will take care of that part. Uh-huh. Make it more saucier. You know? And um, you Chalua. Some of the, the some of more some hot sauce. Bake in the oven to three fifty for half an hour, and then hmm. we'll see see the difference we'll between see. what I got behind me and what it ends up. Like. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I think there's there's lots of different options you can go through in terms of like enhancing the flavor of something um something i got into i'm gonna say pre-pandemic i know it was while i was living here i got into adding curry powder Mm. to mac and cheese right um i've also like shaken in some some from the grated parmesan cheese too oh yeah And, and some pepper to me, that's a given. Like I have a whole cabinet that's full of nothing but spice stuff. So, if I'm if I'm making something like kind of like this, and it's coming, <laughs> it's coming especially from a box, it's automatic. I'm just opening the spice cabinet and I'm like digging around and being like, what am I in the mood for? Because it's like, do I want this or do I want that? You know, it's like, am I gonna mm-hmm. add a little garlic powder? Am I gonna add, you know, uh, some type of seasoning or whatever? Because I just want to like oomph it up Damon, in a way that it's Damon, not you'll be love so bland. adding the garlic salt. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Funnily enough, if I can find them again, give me a second. Um, oh gosh! Was Although it? for my recipe for for mac and cheese casserole, um, I wouldn't be using garlic salt or garlic powder because I'm using the uh, cream mushroom soup with roasted garlic. So there you go. I can skip that ingredient. But it doesn't mean I can't add in like a little Cajun seasoning or something. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I've been seeing, I saw, thank you, um, Facebook, for throwing this at my way. Um, McCormick makes these flavor makers and they're essentially seasoning like combos that you can add for things. And one of them, if I can find it again, is. It is, it's called You Mac Me Smile, and it is a flavor maker mac and cheese topping seasoning, and it has, oh, where are you, what's this say? Um, it says garlic and Parmesan flavor, let's look at the ingredients, I'll just start there. Yeah, garlic powder, breadcrumbs, Parmesan cheese, buttermilk, salt. And other, it says spices and all those things. So it's probably some different ones. So I, um, I remember seeing that one particularly being like, oh, that would be interesting to kind of add to a, um, 
especially like a box mac and cheese or something that's already been like prepared as it were, I can see adding that to add some flavor to it. Um, they have one that I'm really looking forward to, but it has been unavailable for a long time. Um, it is one for eggs. You crack me up, but anyway, I'll just throw this. A lot of them actually are no longer available, but that happens. Yeah, so I, I feel like the, the flavor enhancing is the adventure part. Like, yeah, whether you get it prepared, boxed, or you are making it from scratch, like you, you have things that you can uh, sometimes called fixins. You can just, yeah. you know, put things yeah. in and in various ways to whatever kind of strikes your your fancy in the time or the moment. Yeah. So the last section, because I felt I didn't want to skip on it, was specialty versions. Um, mm -hmm. So I remember when deep fried mac and cheese hit the scene. Right. Probably 10, 15 years ago now. Mm -hmm. um, and what a sensation that was, that it just broke people's brains that you could make a version that was less saucy, that stayed together, like, in its mm -hmm. shape. Mm -hmm. Like, coat it, like, you know, put it through the dredging process, deep fry it, and that's a thing. Yeah. Um, and now what amuses me to no end is, like, they are on every menu, practically everywhere. You can get them at, like, fast food, late night, you know, mm -hmm. easy mm -hmm. spoon yeah. uh, type joints or whatever, because they're already pre-made. They just throw them in a fryer and take them yeah. out. Um, yeah. Not as common, but I do see every once in a blue moon mac and cheese egg rolls, which is the same basic concept. Yeah, because you know? it's um, fried, but well, yeah. Now, right. here's the thing is, with most of these mac and cheese things, they're going to be, the mac and cheese is more on the dry side than the ooyu wet. Well, Sometimes. it depends. Like, if they make, if you're making okay, it from scratch, fine. right, it's right, a little but, bit on the drier side. But these, but the other ones that are, like, commissary major manufactured, they're, like, made in a way that they're not like extra cheesy saucy on the inside, but they're also not really dry. Yeah. I'm not sure if that's making any sense. Like they've, they've chemicalized and figured out how to like get the good in between spot where it's like, if there's a little bit of sauce, but it's not, you know, like it's, it's not a gusher. <laughs> <laughs> that part. Yeah. <laughs> I've, I, uh, I, it, it's weird, but I, 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 I can't, I, I, I love like the deep fried like mac cheese bites or whatever you call them. I I don't know why. I it, I think it's just because it is a fun texture um, moment. You're getting kind of that soft and cheesy and gooey, depending on the the cheese, and then you get kind of the a bit of crunch and a bit of crisp from you know the, the outside breading. Um, specialty one for me. Um, oh gosh, it just left my head. <sighs> Fuck. Oh well, I'll think about. It. I'll give me a second because I I have to see if I Is can. Is it remember. on a stick? No, 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 no. Because we usually cover that in the state food fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there is another trend that I've sort of seen a little bit here and there, which is they put it in a sandwich. Mm. Or if you get real experimental, you make the mac and cheese into a patty, and then you fry the patty, and then you get two of them, and you make that the bun. And this is where America is just it, like it, bastardized. It, it double down the mac and cheese. <laughs> well, funny you say that. But I'm pretty sure KFC recently came out with their, like, um, chicken wraps. And I'm pretty sure, I'm going to have to look it up, but they did have a mac and cheese flavored, not flavored, but it's a mac and cheese chicken wrap. They at least have something called a spicy mac and cheese wrap. Yeah, it's so weird. 
Yep, new spicy yep. mac and cheese. Oh. And no, there is a mac and cheese, and then there's the new spicy mac and cheese. Good lord. But it's it's a wrap, but it's got chicken wrapped in yeah. with mac and cheese with the wrapper. Mm-hmm. Yep. <sighs> so yeah, it's a warm right. tortilla with a three cheese blend with their sauce, mac and cheese, and a chicken tender. Three cheese blend. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up, Mac. Shut up, KFC. You know better. <laughs> Trying to get fancy with treat three cheese blend, whatever. Um, um, but yeah, you know, the, what I, you know what I think this is? I think this is the kids' um, version of the Marie Calendar meal, where you get the the chicken tenders, the chicken tendies, and the mac and cheese. Only they just made it portable because they put it in a wrap. There you go. It just it it I I, I as someone who like I said, genuinely hates KFC's mac and cheese. The idea of them being like, oh, so we're going to throw it on a wrap with some chicken. Sure. Just disappoint me one more time. (laughs) Disappoint me one more time. (laughs) Exactly. It just, the idea of it does not interest me one bit. Um, Actually, no, that's not true. Am I curious? Yeah. But knowing I don't like their mac and cheese, I don't think I'm going to risk the money to be like trying it. I, I just I just don't think I could ever do it. Granted, I don't really I don't and really get KFC. To be fair, anymore. they use the extra crispy for the chicken tender. And right. honestly, I prefer the original. I don't like I'm not a fan of the extra crispy. So they have, they now have, so you do, well, again, random aside, they do have their, their tenders are now the original recipe ones. Right, but I'm talking about in the wrap. Is it the extra crispy one? Yeah, it is. At least in the one I was looking at. It it literally says it in the description. They got rid of those. (laughs) Well, they brought it back, girl. It's okay. They were supposed to get rid of the extra crispy. Anyway, never mind. It, I'm, 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 it's okay. I Here know, I know. You're <laughs> over KFC. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. As someone who <laughs> is from Kentucky, I am so over KFC. It's not even funny. And I think it's mostly because it is not what it used to be. Anyway. I mean, if anything... It has nothing pop, to do with the... has nothing to do with the problematic and... white man that's the logo. Anyways. <laughs> that, that, that's that's yes. here or there. Yeah. That's, not, that's not the point. I am just not... I've, I just have grown up with it. I do like their Popeyes, although they don't make them as much anymore. I did like their Popeye. I really love their Popeye. Anyway. It's on their menu. Um, good to know. I didn't Speaking know. of anyway. like specialty what? versions, I don't know if y'all have ever seen. Um, I have oh, actually God, what is this? made this. So Disney many years ago in kind of came out with this invention of the edible cone, bread cone. Um, this is a more recent article that they brought back the mac and the bacon mac and cheese in a bread cone. Um, I made bread cones. Well, I'm sure the pictures are on my phone somewhere. It might take me a moment to find them. I know <laughs> I made them at home because I got a bug up my butt. I'm pretty sure this was during COVID. Um, if I had to guess. <sighs> And here's the oh, thing is, Lord. they're not hard to make, especially if you buy the dough. Yeah. <laughs> Pre-made. Is it just some, like, phyllo dough or something? Um, no, just pizza dough. Oh, really? Or, like, uh, like you could buy... So here's the cheat. You go to the store and you buy the canister of the, oh. of the roll dough mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. that makes the biscuits or whatever. But, like, you just flatten it out. You don't separate them. Right. Ah. Like, and then you can cut it into a strip and then you just wrap the strip around a cone that you make out of like tin foil or whatever, like spray it huh. first with some, some yeah, 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 sticking yeah. spray. And then you wrap the thing around it and you put it in the oven and you bake it and it bakes into a cone shape. Anyways. Wow. Um, I'm going to have to find a recipe now and add the link to the. Interesting. So I know, but I'm on the fence about this one. It It's, this to me is is feels like fair food. 
are like as you said, it's like an amusement park. What do you like, think they, they sell at Disney? <laughs> oh, I've <laughs> seen like fair. full-on fucking restaurants at Disney. I'm just saying in general, like, but this just. <sighs> I'm on the fence. I don't. I, oh, I guess there is bacon down in there. Okay. Because my main it's issue with this. Park street food. Yeah. Yeah. It is. It is totally fair. I yeah. like it. Okay. Uh, I do like how the reviewer says it's challenging because you eat all that starch from the. And pasta. And then you've got a bread. Oh. Yeah. 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 It's not a sugar hey. cone. It's yeah. It's a bread cone. Yeah. There's a lot going on here. I I, I don't I would I wouldn't mind. I would I would probably eat it. I don't I will I'm I'm interested. I'm intrigued. I may try it. I don't think I want Jim to make it here at the house, but <laughs> the idea the idea of this is interesting to me. I um this is gonna bug me if I can't find this picture because okay. I know I made them and took a picture. Um, I just know that I, I don't know. I got possessed <laughs> in that I was like, you know what? I think I want to make one of these. Like, surely I could be able. I should be able to make these at home, and you can. Like, you just have to be able huh. to, you know. The the thing for me was I was like, oh no, we are we are not making dough from scratch. But no, I'm not I'm not doing that thing. That's fair. Um, so I have a lot of photos. Sorry. Um, <laughs> what's worse is I tried like searching food and like them, you know, that didn't. I've taken pictures of a lot of food in my life, uh, which is kind of sad. But so yeah, like that's. Yeah, that's okay. The thing that that gets me about this is, like, the review is right. It is carbs on carbs on carbs. Like, there's no getting around that. Like, you are basically just, like, it's an edible food transportation device. It's basically like having a bread bowl full of mac and cheese, I think is probably another way to think of it. Um, Yeah. So, I, I mean, I will admit after having it. I really, you know, I mean, I am glad that I did it and then I made it. I make a note that I haven't made it since. And that's probably because I haven't felt like it. Uh, (laughs) Part of it probably has to do with the fact that I didn't want to go through the labor again. Um, Fair. Honestly, it's probably, oh, there it is. (laughs) Very good picture. Oh, and this one. Actually, this isn't the one with mac and cheese. This one is with um, pulled pork barbecued beef in it. I don't know if this will work. It's sort of working. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, literally it was just like pre-made dough ready to go. (laughs) Wrap it on the coney thing. Stick it in the oven. Bake it. Take it out. Fill it done yeah um so anyways yeah. there's there's lots of options and things to do yeah having i think having fun like the thing about a comfort food like mac and cheese is that you can potentially have fun with it um do fun and unique things like like i said the keystone place i like because they make different types they add things to it mostly add things to it to make it you know tasty or tastier um doing things with it i will i don't know if i how i feel about adding it to a sandwich um kind of like the carb envelope might be a little that might be a little much adding it to a sandwich and also i have it has the potential to be really really messy have you have you ever had like yeah that's guaranteed garlic bread with your spaghetti but you've you get the slice garlic bread and then you put the spaghetti on top and you eat that all together like an open face version no you do that with mac and cheese right you can't you can do that but i will admit jeff when i've done like the garlic bread and and a spaghetti or a pasta dish like i'm not eating all of the pasta dish 
on slices of bread. <laughs> like I'm not using the bread as a vehicle to get all the pasta in my mouth. Like it's 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 kind of a Usually, going back and forth when, thing. When I you see this because of certain reasons, I can't. Yeah. Um, but I would have like two or three slices, and it would be like you just open face spaghetti. Yeah. In my face with it. So. Yeah. And, and then, like when I get used to get the uh, Pizza Hut pastas, it always mm-hmm. came with breadsticks. I would like split the breadstick and like stuff it with some of the pasta. Wow. That makes sense. That's fair. That's fair. I, I don't think as an actual complete sandwich, I would do yeah. it. Yeah. I but would like, do just it like as a... in two things that I have as part of the meal and combining it together. Fair. Fair. Um, so, um, are we are we ready to move on? Are we? Yeah. Okay. So I guess my next question, this is a question that I think we were going to talk about, or maybe we talked about post-show last time um, that I want to I ask. Um, number of cheeses. How much is too much, or when oh. do we? When do you lose that? Um, what are your thoughts on that? I have a number in mind. Okay. Um. um I know Jeff just stepped away, it's, but it's going to have to deal with what cheeses you're using. Right. So. I am a kind of classic um, person. Um, I would say three-ish, maybe four, um, but it's usually going to be more meltier cheeses. Mm -hmm. So for me, a nice um, mac and cheese is going to be like a combination of like a sharp cheddar a mild cheddar and probably like a um, mozzarella or something, a softer, like more like meltier, like pulley cheese that um, is going to make it good to me, maybe a Gouda. Um, but um, beyond that, my usual concern is unless the cheese has a stronger flavor, it's going to get lost. It's it, to to me. It definitely has to deal with how the cheeses interact together. Mm-hmm. Right. Like uh, a cheddar and a Monterey Jack, or right? And a pepper Jack, for that matter. Um, put together, great. Some Gruyere, Emmental. I'm not sure I would use Gouda in a mac and cheese. I would think that would be a waste of. i I was about to say when you said you wouldn't do it jeff i was like oh i would but then when you were like it'd be a waste i was like well i i I think gouda would be not to say i wouldn't eat a mac and cheese that has gouda in it it would probably taste great but like if i'm choosing the cheeses i would not choose gouda as a cheese for for it would you want just like a Gouda mac and cheese? No. Okay. I I, I would again. I one I'd be like, why, why are, are we, we doing a Gouda, Gouda mac, mac and cheese? Gouda is better with like straight up on crackers, um, or just straight up. It doesn't even need the cracker. Well, uh, so here's my thing: is what you were saying about like you wouldn't do that because it'd be a waste. I'm like, mm, I'd put it in. If, if like I wanted to just like use it up for some random reason or yeah, yeah. it's not very good Gouda. That too. That's true. That, that, <laughs> yeah. that is true. Some... Then I'm like, then I'm like, all bets are off. Like, like, okay. <laughs> like, yeah. we'll, we'll put you in, like, just to get you used <laughs> up. And, like, see like what I would not put a mozzarella in a mac and cheese. Really? Why not? Oh, I would. Mo- uh, mozzarella to me is too stringy. Okay. Um, too chewy, you might say, too rubbery. Okay. 
Uh, I think there are better mel- melting cheeses, melty cheeses, young cheeses that I would use that I would prefer to have. Okay. Uh, in in mac and cheese, uh, because I I do want the creamy, the smooth. I don't get me wrong. I love cheese pulse. Yes. But oh, I want I'm I'm the chew that I want is from the noodles, not necessarily the cheese. Fair. Fair point, Jeff. Um, but I I mean, if somebody can get a good blend of a like a, a six, seven, eight, nine cheese mac and cheese, I'm all game. It's just you got to think of yeah. how they interact with They're each gonna other. They're going to work together. Yeah. Agreed. And like, I to would me, not if... do something where it says aged. And the reason why I say that was because of things that I learned and it totally makes sense to me from one of the videos that I posted on here. Pro Chef blind taste test every block box mac and cheese where we're talking about the types of mac and cheese they want. Younger cheeses are better melty cheeses. Fair. So well, you don't want is, like an yeah. aged cheddar. Yeah, because it's gonna be drier. It's not gonna it's right, it's right. older, so it's it's you know, well or whatever. But yeah, the um, aged cheddar is great. Aged aged cheeses are great, not in mac and cheese. Yeah, agreed. Gary, you said you had a number. Uh, I was in agreement. It's three. Like when mm. you asked about like how many cheeses, and I was like, man, once you go beyond three, I think you start to lose like the flavor. Yeah. So like I've... I could I could see doing like a pepper jack. And like a cheddar, and then probably American, mm-hmm. because American cheese is not really cheese; it's cheese product, it. and it has, <laughs> and the it has emulsifiers. emulsifiers in it. Right, 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 and that's what gives you that, like you know, True. that that yeah. that um, sticky, gooey kind of like ability. That's why <laughs> Velveeta or block cheese. Po cheese, whatever you want to call it, um, you know, like I was a po kid as like when we were young. Yeah, yeah. There was a time with like you know you yeah, brought yeah. home the big old like huge block of cheese, like mm-hmm. that was cheese. You, you um, that for but everything, it, right, 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 exactly. <laughs> you just hawk off a slice of that, put it between two pieces of Wonder Bread. That was yep. a sandwich. Um, <laughs> uh, like spoiler alert: when the videos I'm linking. Busty mac and cheese myths from Mythical Chicken in Kitchen. They found out the best cheese ended up being half American. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not surprised. I, and that's, it, that's it, the it, weird thing about American cheese. For the world, for those of y'all that have not like been to America, don't, don't be thrown off if you've never had it before. Because it's not really cheese. It's, it's, it's dairy. Like it is made with cheese. <laughs> it is made with cheese. From cheese. In and of itself, it is not actually a cheese, but it has basis in cheese. Correct. Yeah. The the so I think for me the max for a mac and cheese is five. And it has to it has to depend mostly on like Jeff said, like the cheeses have to blend well and go well together. Um, I had had Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah, exactly. Like, and it also depends on where the cheese is. So my, one of my, the, I forget who made this, but someone used to, when I worked downtown, made a five cheese mac and cheese, mac, not mac and cheese, excuse me, five cheese grilled cheese sandwich. And it had the, the fifth cheese was the Parmesan cheese, but it was on the bread. So it was grilled Mm -hmm. with like Parmesan on the bread. And it that. was by far the most, like, just the tastiest fucking sandwich I've ever had. I could not see adding anything, like, a, a six cheese or, a, like, seven, eight, whatever cheese. Like, that would, it, I don't think it would throw off, it would throw off the balance that was going on in this sandwich. But I do recall one of the cheeses. I know it was American. I remember that being it. So it was Parmesan, American, cheddar. Probably Monterey Jack or Pepper Jack. It was um, Monterey Jack. Oh, Colby. 
No, it wasn't Colby. Swiss? There, there was the cheddar. Swiss. There it is. Thank you. I knew there was another one in there. And that was, and it just all surprisingly worked together because none of the none of the cheeses were fighting for like oh, dominant because that that set like uh, uh, cheddar cheddar jack and and uh, yeah swiss uh um, yeah. always work together well yeah so it just it just all it just tasted really good and i really fucking love that sandwich i wish to god i knew where that was i don't think anyone i don't think they're here anymore Ooh, swiss would be good in a mac and cheese you would still it, need to bring in the. It would still have to be blended with like cheddar. Yeah, agreed. Uh, to enhance to to for the for the flavoring, but uh, it'd yeah. be very very cream, interesting and creamy. Yeah, and having and, basically take that sandwich, use those cheeses in the mac and mm-hmm. cheese. Yeah, that's a good sound. That's a good. That's a good mac and cheese. And to sort of counter that, I would not want. In a in a mac and cheese, I do not want a like blue cheese or gorgonzola or or something like that, unless I'm wanting that flavor profile because those oh, flavors goodness. tend to take overtake a lot of the you know mm-hmm. other flavors. It tends to be the strongest flavor. Uh, so if I, I, I like blue cheese, yeah, I I, I love blue cheese, but um, in mac and cheese would yeah. be interesting. Um, yeah, how you would put that in? I it I think can... if you if I'm putting it on something that's not like blue cheese straight up, um, I would prefer it on a burger than on in mac and cheese. I think. Yeah, one of my favorite burgers is like a bacon and blue, like mac and cheese, like not mac and cheese, bacon and blue burger. Mm-hmm. It's one of my favorite combos. Um, yeah, like the stronger cheeses, I think, or at least the stronger flavored cheeses. Um, I feel like if you're doing that, you have to make that kind of the forefront. You're going to call it a blue cheese mac and cheese or a um, gorgonzola mac and cheese, something along those lines, because that's going to be the main flavor no matter what. And and I can see it going with like uh, a, a creamier white cheese. Like I would not put blue cheese with cheddar at all, but like yeah, it's a Monterey Jack or or Swiss, or maybe even um, probably not mozzarella. But I would have to combine that with something like that to, to make the cream better because mm-hmm. I love blue cheese dressing. Because I like the funk of the blue cheese, mm-hmm. the creamiest of the 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 mayo, but the rest of the mayo based uh, uh, dressing. Dressing, yeah. So it would have to be yeah. something that's very a very creamy tasting versus mm-hmm. having mm-hmm. the sharp of, of the cheddar. Yeah, 